Hello everybody, my name is Evan, founder and CEO of Gentatech, and in this video, we are going to go over how firewall rules work in PFSense. Now, there are a ton of videos on the internet, YouTube included, about how to configure a firewall rule, like how to actually set it up in the PFSense interface. I find that a lot of people um, have an issue grasping how they actually work. Are the rules incoming? Or are they outgoing? If you want to control access from one land to another, uh, which, which, which interface do you set it on? So on and so forth. If you watch this video in its entirety, you will have a full understanding of how rules work. We're going to use this uh, little diagram here. I'm going to use an example. We're going to go through it step by step. So the overarching question tends to be, do rules apply to incoming or outgoing traffic? And we're going to go through this rule guide down here, but I want you to keep in mind uh, this little diagram that we've created. So the goal um, in this particular instance is we want to allow any device on LAN 1 to reach any device on LAN 2. Okay. So the question is, well, do we set the rule on the LAN 1 interface or do we set the rule on the LAN 2 interface? All right. And before we hop through here, let's just look at the general rules when it comes to uh, how PFSense works in general. So rule number one, okay, interfaces are designed to control traffic that's coming in to the interface. So then you might intuitively think, okay, well, we're going to set a rule that's an incoming rule. Not quite. This is the part that trips people up. This is uh, number two here, okay? Traffic does not originate from PFSense. It originates from the host. This is the part that confuses people because if we want LAN 1 to reach LAN 2 and we hear that rules apply to incoming traffic, you would think we would just set the rule on LAN 2, but that's not the case. In order for traffic to be routed through PFSense, it first has to reach it, right? So the traffic actually originates at the host. It does not originate in PFSense, okay? So that leads us to point number three which is because the host has to first reach the interface, incoming rules that we set on this interface de facto control outgoing traffic because the traffic cannot leave the interface if it never enters the interface. Okay, a good example of this, let's say you have somebody standing at your front door, all right? And your mission for whatever reason is to make sure that they do not leave your back door. The easiest way to do that is just to shut the front door. Okay, keep the front door shut. PFSense works pretty much the same way. Okay, all the rules are going to be set on the incoming interface. So if we want LAN 1 to be able to reach LAN 2, that rule is going to live on LAN 1 because that's where the traffic is going to enter. After the traffic enters the interface, PFSense can then begin its routing. Okay, and point number four here, PFSense is stateful. So that means that we don't have to have an accompanying, accompanying rule on the, on the LAN 2 interface. So again, the mission here is for devices on LAN 1 to reach LAN 2. So what we will do is set the rule on LAN 1. And since PFSense is stateful, after this traffic reaches LAN 2, there will be a state entered in the firewall that will allow LAN 2 to return traffic uh, over that specific rule set. Okay, So it's not going to open up all of LAN 2 for traffic to all of LAN 1, but just for that particular host or whatever you're using, all right? So again, let's take a look at this here, okay? So the mission is any device on LAN 1 to reach any device on LAN 2. As this traffic is coming into LAN 1, okay, we can either say, hey, nothing from LAN 1 can reach LAN 2 and it will automatically be blocked from doing so, or we can say, yes, LAN 1, you can go ahead and route over to LAN 2, and then it will do so. Now, uh, in real life scenarios, there's something that tends to trick people, which is what uh, PFSense launches with by default. PFSense launches with a default LAN rule that allows any to any. Okay, and you've seen this before if you're watching this video. So what tends to happen is people will go and create another LAN on another interface. And if you don't transfer that rule over, you are not sure why you can't reach anything on one interface, but you can with the other. So that is a trick there. So let's go ahead and just take this out of the equation. Okay, we're going to delete this rule and pretend like that's not there because that allows any traffic to, to reach any interface. So the correct way to do this for the goal here 
of having any device on LAN 1 to reach any device on LAN 2 is to set the rule on LAN 1. Because again, in PFSense, the rule is set on incoming traffic to said interface. So the source of the rule would be LAN 1, the destination would be LAN 2, and of course we would pass that traffic. Okay. The incorrect way to do this would be to go to LAN 2 and then say, hey, LAN 2, you're going to be the source, but the destination is going to be LAN 1, or even the other way around. Okay. So the rule is always going to apply to incoming traffic, but conceptually speaking, that incoming rule is going to control what is leaving out of the interface. Okay. We're going to look at these one more time. All right. So again, interfaces or interface rules are designed to control incoming traffic to this interface. So there's a rule on LAN 1. Okay. We're going to make that rule set here. Okay. But since traffic does not originate from PFSense, the traffic just doesn't start here. Okay. It has to actually get there from the host. Therefore, any rule set that we put on this LAN, this originating interface, will de facto control what comes out of it. Okay. So we're controlling what leaves the interface by controlling what comes in to the interface. And then last but not least, PFSense is a stateful firewall. So we don't have to put an accompanying rule on the interface that we're entering. Okay. And remember that default any rule. That's the thing that really trips people up because you plug into your default LAN interface and then you can essentially reach anything from that interface. Okay, it's a great interface to use for like a management interface. And then you go and create another one down the road. And all of a sudden, if you don't transfer that rule over, you just can't reach or ping anything and you're not quite sure where to start. Okay, so a quick recap here. Anytime you're on PFSense and you are working out of a subnet and you want that specific subnet to be able to reach another one, you want to set the rule on that subnet's interface, okay? And doing so, you will allow that traffic to go ahead and reach somewhere else. So again, just wanted to give a conceptual uh, understanding of how rules work in PFSense. I really, really, really hope this video helps. I know this is a point of confusion for a lot of people. And a lot of people actually end up using another platform because they can't quite grasp how this is supposed to work. So if this helps, please go ahead and like, subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at And I appreciate you watching. Thank you.